Sunday morning, a bit of me time. A bit of me time for me while the boys are sleeping. I get, I like to go swimming. I'm by no means a good swimmer. What I do is I try to swim my laps and try average 60 seconds for every single lap. And I'm not exactly precise. I tend to bounce around all over the place. But what I want to do is try and measure my variability. I want to, I want to sort of see how good I'm going. So obviously I measure my lap times with a little counter. So in this case, in this case on the 12th of July uh, last year, I did a 12, 12 lap session and you can see my times for each lap. On average, I'm pretty happy. I averaged 59.93, which is very close to my goal of 60 seconds. But the reality is averages can lie because I could have done this. I could have done this for each lap. It could have been all over the place. So what I really want to see is how often is each lap close to 60 seconds. So one thing I could do is look at a moving average, say, for every three laps. And that's a nice, easy query we can write using, once again, a window function. If you haven't seen these, these are exceptionally cool. Go to my YouTube site. There's a 30 video playlist on how to write analytic functions. But we can see a moving average is, well, I'm using an average of the elapsed time. How do we define a moving average? Well, partition by each session, because every time I do my set of 12 laps, I want to reset that moving average. I'm ordering it by lap, so I'm processing the rows in this particular order. And here's the magic. I'm saying for a given row, look one row back, one row preceding, and one row following, which gives me one back, the current row on follow, that's three rows, and take the average of it. And that gives me a moving average, which gives me this column. If there's no one row before, then this 59.2 will be the moving average of the current row and the next row. There is no preceding row. But once I get into the rows, it's three rows moving average. So this is useful data for me as well. So that's one way I could look at how smoothly I'm swimming my 60 second laps. So to, to recast that requirement, what I'm really after is obviously the perfect swim would be every lap being 60 seconds. In terms of a tempo, what I'm really interested in is how often do I sort of divert away? You know, do I do, do, do I, and, and how quick can I get back on track? If I swim on too slow, how quickly do I speed up and get back to 60? If I swim on too fast, I want to ease off the next lap. If I do three too fast, how quick can I ease off? I'm, I'm looking for how quickly I can get back to that 60 second tempo. If I look at the raw data, what I'm sort of looking at is sort of a series of deltas. Lap one was 1.3 seconds too quick. Lap two was 0 0.3 seconds too quick. So now I'm going too quickly, I'm gonna, I'm gonna blow up. But the third lap, I got myself you know, a little bit slower. And the fourth lap, very slow, but these four laps actually got me back to a delta of zero when I added up. So these four laps, I was actually ended up with a net result of 60 seconds. You know, it took me four laps. Ideally, every lap would have been 60 seconds, but at least I sort of got back on track after four laps. 60 seconds there. And if we look down, there's also one down here. This one here was also 60 seconds, you know, 0 0.4, 0 0.1, 0 0.4, 0 0.1. I sort of wanted to see, can I measure this in some way using these sort of deltas? The first thing I do is I'll add a virtual column which calculates that delta for me so I can reference it. Now, to make sure my application doesn't break by adding a new column, I can make it invisible. Queries can still use it, but none of my existing application code is going to be impacted. So now let's do a running total, which is similar to a moving average. I'm simply doing a rolling running total, ordering by lap, in this case for a single session, because I'm not partitioning by session. The first lap, my running total was minus 1.3. That's a bad lap, because I was, ideally the running total should be zero, which means I did perfectly 60. Second lap, the delta was now 1.3, so the running total is minus 1.6. It's worse, but it's also a bad set. This one's 0.3 over, got me slightly back. It's still a bad lap. This lap here, 1.3, got my running total back to zero. At that point, zero is good. Zero means this batch of laps got me at least back to an average of 60. And then I would proceed on to the next lap and so forth. What I'm really after is interested in this kind of trend that's going on in my system. If I can get them every single one of zero, that's the perfect swim. But if not, I want to get a few bads, as a few bads as possible, but ultimately get back to zero as often as I can. I'm sort of you know, trying to measure that kind of scenario. And I'm sort of looking at a pattern here. If I was to do it in, in IT speak, which is a regular expression, I would say I have ideally an, an arbitrary number of bad laps. Asterisk means zero or zero or more. So ideally none, but does, if I have some, it doesn't really matter how many I have, as long as I can get back to zero, that pattern. And what was the definition of zero? was when the sum of the delta was zero based on that previous slide. That's what it would be in terms of re re a regular expression. 
I grant that there's an old expression when we say, <laughs> if you have a problem, try a regular expression. Now you have two problems, but regular expressions are what we're going to go with here. We're looking for a pattern. And believe it or not, we can transpose that exactly into an SQL statement. Previous slide said, there's my pattern where the definition of zero is the sum of delta equals zero. A bad lap is really anything as long as I end up on a zero. So here's my pattern. An arbitrary number of bad laps, zero or more, followed by a zero. That's the pattern I'm looking for, where zero is the sum of the delta adding to zero. Once I've got that, the rest is just a little bit of syntax to let the database know we're using this kind of logic. Match recognize is the keyword that says all of this is going to be a pattern matching query. And here we go. It said laps one, two, three were bad laps, but then I got a zero. Laps nine, 10, 11 were bad laps, and then I got a zero. And there we have those two batches of 60 we saw before, one through four and nine through 12. At which point you may be thinking, I might have spent an hour trying to get that query to run when I could have just looked at my 12 laps and worked out those, those averages automatically. But maybe you missed something. The reason we use SQL is because we get more accurate results because that was also a batch of 60, two through 10. And I can actually do that with a slight adjustment to my query as well. I can actually tell the database, I want every single possible pattern match, no matter where they start. So one through four was a pattern. Even though I've covered rows one through four, I now want you to start back at row number two, which is the next row after this pattern completed. So two through 10 was a batch of 60. 4 through 10 was also a batch of 60, and 9 through 12, as we saw, was a batch of 60. SQL gives us a much more complete result because we don't miss anything that our eyeballs would normally miss.